gentlemen, the trunks are okay, but anything right in here, I'm gonna let go, okay? Presteme attention, protecte en todo momento, play duro, play limpo, buena suerte. Listo. Listen, I think this is an even matchup, but Delgado, where he's at, his skill set and ability, this is the fight that he's supposed to, to dominate. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but where he's at in his skill set compared to Aguilar, I think he's further ahead. And I want to see him take that step tonight. But Aguilar is not going away easy. Aguilar understands how important this fight is because he's 24-0 with 23 knockouts. And he said, I am tired of people saying that I'm only knocking out cab drivers and ice cream vendors. Tonight, I'm going after an Olympian. And that's going to put me at a different level. Tonight is his opportunity. Good stick, good jab to the stomach. Now they got him. And there's that stick to the head as well. That's been the key for Delgado early on in this fight, wow. using that jab, despite the fact that he's at a two and a half inch reach disadvantage against Aguilar. Yeah, but he has a speed advantage. Mm -hmm. And quality of sparring advantage. That too. Nice jab to the body now from Aguilar. He returns the favor. Yeah, you always talk about sometimes what your opponent does reminds you of what you need to do. It's a lot you're thinking about in that ring, and sometimes you get hit with the shot, or you get hit with the body shot, and it does remind you, hey, let me go down there as well. I'll be waiting on that. That's what you wait on. You know you know a guy's going to copycat. Mm. Set him up. Do something, allow him to do it, and then make, make him pay for it. That's what we're talking about when we mean the Ooh, great spot right. for Lindolfo Delgado is getting in, getting in there against guys like Jose Ramirez, Raymond Murataya, Giovanni Santillan, who we see on our ESPN show, among so many others, even Virgil Ortiz for his last fight. As long as you're not taking punishment in that gym, that kind of competition in the gym is extremely important and very good for you, and it will cause you to progress a lot faster than if you didn't have it. Look at the right cheekbone yep. of Aguilar already showing inflammation as he throws a nice combination and finishes it by digging to the body of Delgado. Yeah, Aguilar, he realized that Delgado was throwing a single jab the same pace, and he timed it that time, following it out with a combination. Uh-oh. Blood alert for the light-colored suits. Uh -oh. The nose of Omar Aguilar is starting to leak. They messed up my mob suit. I ain't messing up. No more parts of that, though. Hey, Dre, you haven't been dealing with this, but it's an issue. <laughs> Aguilar will kind of dig to the body, cut off that ring against Lindolfo Delgado. Good jab right there from Delgado. A chess game so far through one round between Delgado and Aguilar. Two Mexican power punchers with different skill sets. Yeah, he's, you know, he's under his father, he's under his grandfather. I mean, he grew up in the game, and if he has a liking to the game, which he does, he can't help but grow and, and you know, gain their brain trust as well. But the ability to transmit Ooh. that as uh, Aguilar lands a nice overhand right on the chin of Delgado. We'll see if he decides to go right after him or if he decides to box and listen to his corner. Listen, Agu Aguilar coming out now. He, he turned his gears up. He's coming at Delgado because he didn't like that first round. He know he lost that first round, and now he's trying to get some get back. He shouldn't like the first round. You just see the difference in Stop. height Morning and punch. reach. Suffice. And even Suffice. though they're just as tall as one another, according to what they both list at 5'9", the reach definitely favors Aguilar, and he's coming after Delgado here in the second round. There's a right hand available, and I see Delgado going for it. You know, he's off the mark right now, but ooh, that uppercut was nasty. Those are the kind of shots that Delgado has to land because Aguilar comes hard, but he comes the same way. His head is right in line to be hit with straight shots or uppercuts like you just saw, and he has to take advantage of that because Aguilar, when that rhythm starts to get going and that engine gets revved up, he's hard to stop. And there's that counter left hook from Delgado, and it's applauding Aguilar coming forward, and you see now he's cut Delgado over the right arm. 
And this fight is getting the crowd going at the Pachanga Arena. There's blood from both fighters, or maybe it was just blood from the nose of uh, Aguilar that landed on Delgado's right eyebrow. We'll take a look at it. That's the key punch for Delgado's, the left hand. He can't get lazy with that, and he can't get tired of boards throwing it because that's the only thing that's going to keep the hard-charging Aguilar back. And there goes those quick shots. You see the looping shots favor Aguilar, but the short shots favor Delgado. People, a fight just broke out. Mm. Fight is definitely stop, broke stop, out stop, here. Stop my break. There's a certain level of respect from both fighters, though, because Aguilar is not just walking straight in. He understands oh. that Delgado, he's got to find a way in against Delgado. Yeah, usually when you have two punchers, both guys are real tentative, but these guys are getting after it. You know, Aguilar just just turned the tempo on. That, that's to a success. He's letting those hands go. That's his chance to win tonight. He's got to be active. Stop, 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 well, you see, whereas stop, stop. you got Delgado that's looking for the perfect shots. But you have Aguilar just being busy. Two rounds of action, and you can see there's a lot of tension because this fight can turn on just Stop. one punch. Look, Ag Aguilar is loose with his punches. He's loose with his power. He's letting his hands go fluently with combinations. Where you have Delgado, he's a little bit more tight with his shots. So it's one, two punches at a time. It's not fluent. You see a 15 to 20 advantage for Aguilar. 83 punches thrown by Aguilar compared to 30 to 68 total for Delgado. So that's a huge difference. So what I'm trying to Let say is, is that Delgado can get out worked mm -hmm. because he's Delgado, only throwing a one, two shots at a time where you have the more fluent Aguilar. Letting his hands go. And Delgado's a guy that likes to measure it twice and cut once. He wants to make sure he's got the perfect shot through there before he lands. But Aguilar's taking that away. Ooh, he's not allowing Delgado to think the way he wants to. So Delgado has to trust his instincts and let the shots go. And Aguilar needs to keep doing what he's doing. Nice combination there from Aguilar. He's turning up the heat here in round number three. Connects with the body shot as well. And here comes Delgado with a combination of his own. See, but Delgado, when he let his hands go, he has to recharge. Whereas Aguilar, he, he don't have to recharge. He can let his hands go right back. Oh, left hook from Aguilar, and Delgado takes it so far. But man, many more of those. That explosiveness is definitely out there for both guys. Stop, stop, stop. Come on, guys, stop wrestling. Stop wrestling. Box. See, what you're seeing and what we're witnessing right now is two undefeated fighters oh. trying to teach the other one how to lose. Left uppercut from Delgado follows it with a left hook and then the right hand to the chin. The key for Delgado is the jab. He's got to get that left hand out there. Nothing's going to slow Aguilar down, not even the wide shots that Delgado's throwing. He's got to come behind the jab, freeze Aguilar, and then let the shots go because nothing is slowing Aguilar down. Ooh, you see the swelling under the right eye of Delgado as well, Tim. Oh, nice straight right from Delgado. The slight movement, it's a beautiful thing to see. You know, that's boxing one-on-one. -on -one. Using movement, picking up your feet, changing locations, allowing your man to come in and make a mistake, and then you're looking to get offline and make him pay. That's what Delgado is trying to accomplish. Ooh, Delgado put himself in a very dangerous position coming in, and Aguilar just missed that counter right. But you see the legs of Delgado giving him some trouble there. Stop. 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 Stop for it. Third round in the book. Aguilar, who is also a fighter, working the corner of Omar Aguilar. Two undefeated fighters at 39-0, combined 36 knockouts. This fight can end at any time. Do not blink as you see that Aguilar has been very, twice as many punches thrown as Delgado, but Delgado has landed nine punches more. So it's about efficiency in this fight.
I don't think it's the one big shot that Delgado throws that's going to stop or turn away Aguilar. He's got to let his combinations go, and he's got to come behind the jab. The jab is what started all the trouble for Aguilar in that first round. Because he's hurt. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Listen, it's too tough. Aguilar's tough, too tough for his own good. He needs to recover, buy some time, clear his head, step back a little bit. It's not Nobody's happening coming tonight. forward. <laughs> it's not happening tonight. How about he comes back with a double jab, Tim? Oh, he can come back with a double jab, but he's still got to be leery because guess what? Delgado got something planned for him. He's waiting to tee off for him seven months or something, and he's going to take his head off with it. Delgado went to the body with the right hook, but he really opened up when he threw it. And here comes Del uh, Pollo Aguilar. Aguilar knows one way, fight harder. That, too much desperation, Dre. Too much desperation. I'm on pins and needles right now, people. Have, mm, oh, my about that right uppercut from Delgado. Sneaky right uppercut right there from Delgado. Oh, there's that body oh. shot downstairs. Here comes Pollo Aguilar as well. This is what we expected. This is what we told you this fight would turn out to be. My goodness, I do not know how Omar Aguilar finished this round on his feet. It's Cop Corazon. Let's listen in to Lindolfo Delgado's corner. He is not on your level. Just keep boxing him. Move, use your jab. Did you see how you hurt him? When he comes in, you can catch him with the shot. That uppercut is there for you. Do not stand still. This dude is not on your level, no doubt. Look, you see the, you see the movement right here. This is what does the job for him. Boom, planted that back foot. Boom, brought it right up the middle. And guess what, who was there? Aguilar. Chin straight exposed, right up the middle. Here he goes, had that high guard on. What I tell you about that high guard? It's open, right up the middle. Beautiful shot lands for Delgado. And that was a knockdown. I don't care what the referees say or anybody say. That right there was without a doubt a knockdown. Absolutely should have counted as a knockdown because Aguilar held on for dear life and was going down as he grabbed the legs of Lindolfo Delgado, who landed 24-41, 59% of his punches, and they were all power punches in that round. See, that's why it's very important that, to learn different facets. You know, in the beginning, you saw Delgado trying to march forward, trying to beat the boss, trying to stand his ground. Then all he did, one minor adjustment, pick up my feet, make this guy try to locate me and catch him when he makes a mistake. This is why I said that even though the fight is evenly matched on paper, Delgado has things that he can do to really dominate the fight, but he's not always consistent with those yes. things. And Aguilar's not playing along, and he's a hard guy to turn away. And you see Aguilar's punch efficiency in terms of how many he lands per round going down in round three and four. And the opposite happens for Delgado, who's been pretty consistent, and he lands a nice left hook there, does the Olympian. And make no mistake about it, even though Aguilar's coming forward, he's, he's, he's taking a lot of punishment. You see the punishment on his face. It's not in him to turn away, so Delgado has to find a way to force Aguilar to turn away. 
But you can see the punishment starting to sink in on the face of Aguilar. And you can see Lindolfo Delgado starting to time Aguilar coming in. That footwork is giving Aguilar a lot of trouble because he doesn't have time to set his feet. And to Tim's point, that's the answer for Delgado. Move, move, play possum, and then explode and shock Aguilar. Mm. You can't hit him with a shot that he sees, he'll probably take it. But if you hit him with a shot he doesn't see, you get that reaction we saw the last round. I'll tell you another thing that I believe that Delgado right now is shot away from that could help him is going to the body. When he was able to land that, land that uppercut, he started off going to the body. Start bringing those hands down. Oh, oh, he set up that uppercut, but it was nicely defended by the right glove of Omar Aguilar. Aguilar trying to set up that long right hand. He knows that's the shot that could change the fight for him. Delgado being very smart. Yeah, he switched up the pace and he changed his game plan, which is even harder for Aguilar to deal with, because now he's forcing Aguilar to move his feet, making him work hard, and then he's trying to run him in the shot. Yep. Aguilar wants you right in front of him. Delgado's not playing along. These are the ebbs and flows and adjustments we talk about in the middle of a fight. You see a fighter's IQ begin to rise all of a sudden during the fight because they unlock a major key. Two Mexican warriors in the ring right now. They combine for 36 knockouts and 39 victories. And in our main event tonight, it'll be Emmanuel Navarrete against Eduardo Baez, another pair of Mexican fighters with a title at stake. Round six of a scheduled eight round fight. This duel between two undefeated fighters you'd expect later on in their respective careers. And you see the total punches through five rounds. 96 landed for Delgado against 82 for Aguilar. That changed completely from round three on. See, what happened is these guys are fighting a fight one type of way. And then Delgado switched up the pace and Aguilar hasn't gotten the memo. So he hasn't made the adjustments. What's happening now is Delgado is getting ready to set Aguilar up to hit, to land a devastating shot that could knock him out because he's not making any adjustments. His head is right there, and he's taking a lot of punishment. So now the shots are starting to move him, when in the first couple rounds, they didn't. But, the, but Aguilar just landed a nice counter left hook. Oh, he's dangerous yes. until, he, until this Ooh. fight. Ooh. 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 He buzzed him. He buzzed him with that. Delgado went to sleep in that corner. You cannot allow a fighter like Aguilar to do that. But if you can catch him coming in, that double impact is double dangerous. Double dangerous, baby. See, the problem with Delgado is, is that when he decides to move, Aguilar is already too close. And he's able to extend with his hands. And Delgado decided to come towards Aguilar instead of moving. Now he's back to moving laterally and he lands a right hand and a nice right uppercut on Aguilar. Stop, stop, See, when you, when you move, you gotta make sure you have the proper distance. You know, and so that way you can be set the punch or get out of the way. If you move while he's too close, then he can stand with his hands. Aguilar, he's gonna be able to land something. See, just like that. Put you out, out of off position. You see that right hand of Aguilar also able to land. He spits. And he blows his nose because there's a lot of blood emanating from both nostrils here. Delgado's looking for one big shot. But that's a change. He'd been setting up his shots all fight. Now he's looking for one shot. Well, he's boxing, but within the boxing, he's still looking for that one shot because he knows that Aguilar is beat up. He knows that he's weakening him. You can feel it as a fighter. That's why he's feeling confident now to look for that one shot. He couldn't have got it early, but late in his fight, he might come. There's that right hand from Aguilar. That's what I'm it's saying. It's always on the ropes for Delgado. That's the only time he gets hit. Delgado got to get back in the gym, and he got to work on tying up. He got to understand that there's a system with stop, tying up. Stop, now, stop, he tied right? up right stop. there, but he stayed his, kept his back on the ropes. Turn and get back to the center of the ring. Get, get more control of that real estate. Aguilar trying to dig to the body as Delgado lands a double right hand. And then Aguilar lands a nice looping left hook. You can see that right eye of El Pollo Omar Aguilar starting to close. And they're going to have to do some work on it here in the blue corner. 
Round seven of a scheduled eight round fight. Bernardo Osuna, Timothy Bradley, and the Hall of Famer Andre Ward from Batonga Arena in San Diego, California. So far, Lindolfo Delgado and Omar Aguilar delivering on what they promised, the war. But it's not just the brawl, guys. This is high skill level art of war. Yeah, people don't think that when guys are standing toe to toe that that can be a skillful art. It can, especially when that's the, the, the main way a fighter fights. They learn these crafty tricks and ways to, to block shots and cut the power down and get their own shots. Hey. Good shot right there from Aguilar. This is high level skillful stuff from both guys. Stop, stop, stop. Got hit once again with his back to the ropes. Back to the ropes. Now Delgado though, he's got something to come back with. 113 to 101 is the punch landed so far through six. Delgado has to learn how to walk in the oh. He wants to rest on the ropes in pose and doesn't realize that that's when Aguilar comes alive. That's where he had, he's had his best moments so far in this fight, right there when Delgado's just sitting against the ropes. That's a dead spot. You have to avoid it at all costs because Aguilar is still dangerous until the final bell. And he's slinging that right here. Bad intentions on him. Oh, short left hook from Lindolfo Delgado. But that's going to wake up Aguilar. Fondero, fondero. And there you see fondero, Delgado fondero, having to fondero, hold on fondero. and tie up the offensive minded Aguilar who goes to the body but then gets caught with an overhand right. Tried to sneak it right up and cut in there too. It just Delgado. missed. Fondero, Delgado. So that was nice to be hit in the center of the ring. That was a beautiful angle right there. Created by the footwork of Delgado. Nice little shuffle around. For better or worse, Aguilar is all heart. And there's no turn, no backing down in his heart. And the times we do see Delgado just stand up against the ropes, doing what he's doing against a power puncher like Aguilar is difficult. Yeah, Delgado's got to learn how to walk and breathe and rest along the way. He, <laughs> fighters go to the ropes because it feels safe, but you can't do that with every opponent. This is not the opponent that Delgado can do that with. He's gotten hit and gotten hurt multiple times making that same mistake. The ropes are not your friend when it comes to an opponent like Omar Aguilar. Look, when you're picking up your feet like that, your opponent's going to attack you. But it's like Dre said, if you're walking and you're set to punch, you ready for the move. You gotta understand. You you're in the air when you're moving like that, and when the guy's trying to cover ground on you. Stop! 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 Seeing a little stop, fatigue on their guy in this round. Tempo. We're listening to both corners here as Aguilar goes into his corner once again, bleeding from his nose. Did a good job on that eye so far with an end swell. Hey, this is the last round. Take a deep breath, son. Hey, just go out there and throw some shots, man. Get some water. Just go throw shots. Okay, they're going to send him out to knock you out. When he makes a mistake, you got to catch him with that uppercut, either the right or the left. He's going to open up, and that's going to give you an opportunity to catch him with big shots. Guys, the difference in each corner was notorious. The father of Aguilar had very little answers, and the precision of Robert Garcia and Jose Contreras in Delgado's corner was telling. Listen, Garcia is coaching his tail off tonight, and he has every time we've seen him. Yes. He's got a doing his thing now because he's his father putting him in these big moments but he's got a great career ahead of him as a coach because he's telling Delgado all the right things yeah right here nice overhand right from Omar Aguilar Tim and he better stay off the ropes I, I just I, I'm just so confused you can tie up it man you get the other hooks and you can push him back in the center of the ropes make him use his legs and then turn them so you can gather more real estate stop these are little things that I believe that Delgado needs to go back to the gym. If he comes out here alive, they work on it. will help his game. Aguilar just missed with a grazing left hook there. He's got to know that the knockout is the only way he comes out of here undefeated tonight. Ooh, nice double right hand from the Olympian. 
See, when you step inside, that's what you say. Step inside safe, you let the referee do his job to separate you, then you buy yourself some time. And you're killing the clock at the same time. There's that stick from Indolfo Delgado. He takes a couple of shots, though, from Omar Aguilar, who's going to give you everything he has for the next minute and 40 seconds of this eighth and final round. I saw some fatigue on Delgado the last round, and that's also following him into this eighth round, because this is where you want to close the show, to send a message to Aguilar, the boxing world, anybody viewing at home that I'm the next one. Right now, he's not making that statement in this round. Nor is Aguilar allowing him to make this statement, although he catches him with a nice looping step, counter step, left. Step you see the urgency of Aguilar. He's exposing himself. There's definitely opportunities that I see that Bill Gatto can capitalize on, and he's doing that right now as Aguilar sits directly in front of him with his hands down. Right body shot and the three piece to the head from Bill Gatto. Dead spot for Delgado, which allows Aguilar to land two or three shots that weren't devastating, but yes, they add up in their points. Oh, mm. nice counter left from Delgado, just allowing Aguilar to walk himself into a shot. Oh, a big right hand from Delgado. No adjustments by Aguilar and his team at all. They're allowing him to think his way through this, and he's got no answers himself, and he's gotten nothing from the corner from his father in terms of adjusting and changing. But this has been a great fight between two Mexican warriors, and someone's always going to go as they get a good round of applause from the fans. The final bell after that right uppercut from Lindonfo Delgado. And guys, what a fight these two gave us. That was impressive. I love every moment of this fight. You know, we saw, we saw it all. We saw two big punchers. We saw the toughness. We saw boxing ability. We saw one man actually change the entire fight from the second round on just by picking up his legs and moving, just making adjustments. It's beautiful work. We saw the heart of both men on display as well. I just think it was overall just a great fight. This is the kind of fight that both guys needed at this stage in their career to catapult them and give them the confidence to know that they can compete at the upper echelon level. I loved it. Everything was started off with that jab right there from Delgado. Beautiful shot. Then he started landing. Like I told you, that jelly, that uppercut, that buzz. Oh, my goodness. That big shot right there. You know, you can take advantage of your opponent. He took advantage of Aguilar committing, over committing, looking for a big shot, chasing him down, moved just slightly, so ever, to the right and planted that back foot and came right up the middle with that uppercut. Delgado has to continue to work on his craft, obviously, but he has to be more consistent if he's going to compete with the big boys in this weight class. Aguilar. Continue to be aggressive, be who he is. Don't take away his instinct, but he's got to learn some different nuances with his defense, but although he may not be around very long. Taking we, that kind of punishment. Yeah, because he took 50% of Lindolfo Delgado's power shots at a 94 of 188 clip. 46% of Delgado's total punches found a home on either the body or face of Omar Aguilar. And how wide will the decision be, according to the judges? Mark Shirok has that answer. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds here inside Pachanga Arena, make some noise for an incredible fight. We go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Jerry Contu scores the bout 77-75. Pat Russell and David Sullivan both score the bout 79-73. All in favor of your winner by unanimous decision. Lindolfo Delgado! Big win at the 16th fight mark for Lindolfo Delgado, the hardest of his young career against fellow unbeaten Omar Aguilar, who drops his 25th fight, the first loss of his professional career.